This week it's Parashat Bo. We talked about the ninth plague, Makat Choshech, the plague of darkness. Because you have to take a second and really think about that plague a little bit more than what you're used to from kindergarten. Yeah, it's number nine out of ten. It should be the worst, almost the worst of all. But like three days of darkness, what's so bad about that? That's the scariest thing. But we actually see Paro's response here is different than every other time. Exactly, exactly. When you think about the plague of darkness, when you think about it, what's so scary about it? What's so terrible about it? How does it even compare to lions chasing you in the street, to hail with fire falling down from the sky? How is this the ninth plague just before Makat Bechor? And on top of that, why does it make Paro so scared that he calls over Moshe and Aaron and says to them, I want to let you go, just leave your cattle here. Why does this plague create this response within Paro? What is this plague about? What is going on in Makat Choshech? Hope you enjoy it. Take a look. So yeah, it's Parashat Bo this week. Am Israel is about to leave Egypt. And in the past, we talked about the beginning of the Parsha. We talked about the end of the Parsha, the different mitzvot we find in the Parsha. This year, I want to talk about one of the makot, makat choshech, darkness that came onto the world as the ninth makat. Because if I ask you, Yitzi, describe to me the plagues, describe to me the makot on Mitzrayim, and tell me which ones were the scariest, which ones were the most awful ones, the ones that made Paro really tremble and really be afraid. You'd maybe say, start with Dam. Dam was terrible. All your drinking water turns into blood. The smell, you can't drink anything. Frogs also, the noise, the way they took up everything, and then also the smell and came. Everything is terrible on different levels. Arov is very frightening. Barad coming down from the sky. Hail, ice and fire coming down from the sky. These are terrible things, very scary. But if you pause and think about Makat Choshech, about the darkness that came onto the world, first of all, it was only for three days. Only three days of darkness. According to Rashi, before Hashim, it was six days, three and Three. But shot in the Pasuk, if we read the Psukim, it was three days. But more than that, it was just darkness. You know, we are adults. We try not to be afraid of the dark. Some places are a little bit scarier than others. But still, you really have to ask, what's so terrible? What's so frightening about this Makah of Choshech, about this darkness? That's so much so that after it, Paul right away calls Moshe and says to him, leave, you can go out, just leave the cattle here. This is even happening after the plague has been done. After the plague is done, there's no more plague. Still, Paro goes and he calls Moshe and tells him, you can leave now. So what's so terrible? What is so awful about this plague of darkness about Makat Choshech that causes this reaction in Paro? Yeah, this is like number nine out of ten. The almost worst as can be. Just before Makat Bechorot, we have a few days of dark. And as you said, there's no other Makkah where we see Paro come and want to send Am Yisrael away when the Makkah is over. When the Makkah is over, he's always, everything's fine. Everything goes back to normal. When the frogs are still there, he begs Moshe, you know, get rid of the frogs and I'll send you out. But once they're gone, everything's okay. You know, when the Arob is there, he wants to get rid of it. But once it's gone, everything's okay. But here, even after those days are over, Paro doesn't feel safe. Paro, for the first time, he feels unsafe and unsecure and he says, I'll send them out. And I think to understand this, we need to notice something interesting. If you think of it, all the different makot were plagues that came upon Mitzrayim. Okay, so you have Mitzrayim, and then we have frogs, and then we have the hail, and then we have different things that happened to Mitzrayim. And what is Paro always asking Moshe to do? To lahasil, to remove them from upon Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim's there, and then we have some evil that comes upon it, some makah, some terrible thing, and now he just wants Wants to get rid of it. But once that's gone, he feels safe again. He feels secure. Makat Choshech is something else. Makat Choshech is not something that comes upon Mitzrayim. It's the opposite. Suddenly, Mitzrayim loses light, loses the most basic thing. The first thing that we have in creation, the first thing that Hashem creates in the world, Vayehi O, Hashem creates the light. And we go back to that most basic thing of existence and say, that's gone. You have nothing. If you're not ready to recognize that Kadosh Baruch who runs this world, you'll lose everything. And think of it also from the experience. For the first time, Paro is alone. Paro feels alone. He doesn't see anything. That's all the Pasuk says. What happens during the Makot? They don't see each other. They don't move anywhere. They don't see each other. Paro, who always looks around and sees all the people around him, sees his kingdom, sees, yeah, you know what? There are some challenges that are coming upon me. But once they're all gone, he looks around. He comes out of his palace. He sees his beautiful country. Okay, but the little damage here and there, but at the end of the day, he sees all of his power, everything he has, and now 
He sees nothing. He doesn't see anything at all. Just think of it for three days. He doesn't even know if Amistral, by the way, are still in me trying. They could be gone by the time it's over. He has nothing. He loses everything. He loses the most basic aspect of creation. And therefore, when it comes back, he suddenly doesn't feel safe anymore. He suddenly doesn't feel that some evil, some bad things were removed. He suddenly gets life, gets reality again, and he's very worried he may lose it again. It may slip away. Like many people who go through tragedies or dark times in their life, when things come back to normal, they don't see it as normal anymore. They feel they got their life back again. And therefore what? Therefore they're not back to what they were before. No, no. It's a new life. It's something else. They suddenly realize that every moment that they have life is a present. They could lose it. It could slip away. It could disappear. And therefore for the first time, Paro, after it's all over, when there's nothing to worry about, he doesn't feel safe anymore. He suddenly for the first time maybe begins to recognize that Hashem runs the world and that the world isn't in his hand. It's not only some enemy Hashem who's bringing some, some battles against him, bringing different challenges upon him. And all he has to do is get rid of it and things are back to normal. It's the opposite. He loses the most basic thing and suddenly realizes that nothing is in his hand. And this is that moment, the one before the last, before he actually sends Am Yisrael out. At this point, he realizes, even though right now I'm not experiencing anything, nothing is really in my control it. Very good, very good. I like what you're saying about going back to what you were before, going back to the normal you had before and unable to go back to that something changed because I want to get back to that point soon. But before that, really, maybe the point here is not about necessarily the darkness that went on the world. The darkness was very scary. They didn't see each other for three days. And we'll get to that point also soon. But more than that is maybe the fact that there was something created here in the world. When Moshe sets his mate onto the sky. When Moshe reaches out with his mate, suddenly vayehi choshech. There is a new darkness in the world. And just like you're saying, you have to go all the way back to the beginning of creation, literally to the beginning of the Torah. Because the first thing HaKadosh Baruch Hu created in the world to make the world is vayehi ol. Meaning, the Torah describes how there was darkness. Ve'aretz aita tov There was the land with tov avo. Ve'choshech apnei teom and darkness on the land. But then HaKadosh Baruch Hu created light. You could go into the philosophical debate if there was no light how come there was darkness if there's no one side how can you have the other side but we'll put that aside but the fact the matter is that the Torah describes the Vayehi Or as the first creation in the world because this world was created to add light this world was created for good that's what this world is for that's what we are here in the world for we are here to bring light this is the most basic foundation that we live by Vayehi Or the whole purpose of this world our purpose as human beings is to bring light into the world and Chatzah Khalil are not darkness. And darkness happens when you don't have enough light. And the exact opposite. When you have a lot of darkness, all you need is little light. This is what we always talk about around Hanukkah. But the fact is that here in Makat Choshech, something else happened. Here in Makat Choshech, and this is an argument between Rashi and Unculus, but we can say that here in Makat Choshech, Choshech was created. Darkness was created. And Paro sees this, and this is what scares Paro. This is what shakes up Paro. Paro understands that this is not some kind of darkness. This is not some kind of a long night that is going on. There's three days of a night that is happening, but rather there is a darkness that came onto the world as a new creation. And maybe the beginning of this Makar, of this plague, the way that it was created, the darkness was created, this is what shakes Paro. But then on top of that, first of all, they did not see each other. And then besides that, that one didn't get up from underneath himself, from underneath his brother. It's kind of confusing what it means when you compare it to Loa but maybe we can also say that part of the idea here, just like you were saying, is that Paro's life, Paro's reality around him was very much based on everyone else around him, of everyone else around him seeing him, him getting his validity, his validation from the people around him, him needing to show everyone around him that he is a God. And first of all, when he doesn't have that, when he's all alone just with himself, he understands that he's a nothing, that he has nothing for himself. And that's another thing that shakes him. But then besides that also, we've discussed this in the past, this idea, this concept of Mitzrayim being sus bayam, this idea that in Mitzrayim, the culture, the society in Mitzrayim was built around the idea that one rides the other person. In order to climb in life, you have to have as many people underneath you in order to be worth something. Without having people underneath you, you are worth nothing. That idea, that concept of Mitzrayim, as we've discussed in the past, 
class. Maybe this is also what we see here. Lo kamu ishtachtav, power understanding. Not only that he sees no one around him that he can show off to, but also there's no one coming from underneath him. There's nobody underneath him. There's nobody there to rise him up. And he's all alone and he's all by himself. And being all by himself in this darkness, this is what shakens him up. This is why he then goes and calls over Moshe and Aaron and says to them that they can leave because this is what shakens his reality. And maybe this is why Makat Choshech is right there at the end, almost before the Etziat Mitzrayim. Because in the end of the day, as we've also mentioned in the past several times, the plagues, the Makot, were not only for the Mitzrayim to see, for the Egyptians to see, but also, and even more so, for the Jewish people to see. For Am Yisrael to see in Mitzrayim, Ve'lebnei Yisrael haya or b'moshvotam. First of all, they saw that they had light, but on top of that, you could say, not only did they have light, they had the opposite of Mitzrayim. They continued on with the light that they have. They continued on with their essence of being Am Yisrael, of being a nation that looks to add light into the world and doesn't get confused by darkness, doesn't confuse itself with different ideas. And as you're saying, sometimes when tragedy happens, it reminds you what your life is about. It reminds you what is really important in life. And you have to hold yourself from not going back to what was before. That darkness that happened, that darkness that shook you up, it shook you up for a reason. It was a terrible thing. It was an awful thing. It was something unbearable, but it happened. And now the question is, are you continuing on into the light and using that darkness in order to see the light now? Or are you going to go back to live the way you lived beforehand? And you see this going on around us, the different conversations going on. One of the strongest statements maybe that is going on now is that we can't go back to live the way we lived before and we shouldn't go back to live the way we lived before. We should continue the light that we had, but we should continue adding even more light and not let that darkness confuse us, not let the darkness around us that still exists around us confuse us and remember that the light is there, that this world was created in order to add light. And we can't go back to the way we were before, but it is hard. It is hard because our nature, Teva Adam, the nature of human being, is to want to go back to a certain routine in order to feel comfortable with yourself, in order to be in a comfort zone. But we can't allow ourselves to go back to what it was before. Lehavdil from Paro, we have to take what happened and use it in order to make a real change in ourselves so that we can go back to adding more light into the world. Take the light that we had before but also add more light into the world because in the end of the day this is what the world was created for the world was created to add light not chaz v'chalila to create choshech this is our purpose this is our message for the world and this is what we have to continue doing even when times are very hard yeah you're speaking of adding light there are these two sides there's both adding light which is something we're always supposed to do but there's also recognizing the light that's around us that we don't always recognize and I think this is somewhat expressed in these words which ring a bell for me. Ulivnei Yisrael haya or b'moshvotam. Am Yisrael had light. It doesn't say they created light. They didn't do anything. They just had light. And very soon we're going to see that Am Yisrael gets a tzivui on Shabbos. Lo tevaru esh b'chol moshvotechem. You shouldn't light fire. You shouldn't create light b'chol moshvotechem. Throughout the whole week, we add fire. You're supposed to add light. You're supposed to do. But on Shabbos, we do the opposite. We recognize the light that we have. Often we don't recognize the light that's around us. And as you're saying, and as we were discussing, after dark times, we suddenly recognize the light. We can't just go back to, okay, the darkness is over. Darkness isn't something that just goes away like the other makot. Darkness represents that that light that we're so used to, that the light that we think is an obvious thing, it's part of how it is, that doesn't necessarily have to be here. That's a present. And when we recognize that present, it changes our entire life. Very good, very good. And of course, we have to look ahead in the psukim because first of all, this Makkah, this plague ends with a very interesting statement from Paro where he says to Moshe, I don't want to see you anymore. Obviously, the Torah tells us Paro, who couldn't see for three days, who couldn't see his brothers for three days, is now trying to recreate reality and saying, oh, I couldn't see my brothers for three days. Now, Moshe, I don't want to see you anymore because if I see you, I'm going to kill you. And says to him, Moshe, you're right. You're not going to see me again. And we know next time he sees him is when he calls them in order to let Am Yisrael go out of Mitzrayim. And then right after this, Agadosh Baruch Hu tells Moshe that he's going to plague the Egyptians with Makat Bechorot, with the last plague. But then after that, we have the first mitzvah, the very famous first mitzvah, the mitzvah that Rashi asks in the beginning of the Torah, why don't we start with it? The idea of Rosh Chodesh, the idea of Rosh Chodesh is going out into the darkness and looking for that light in the sky. 
going out into that darkness of times and looking for that moon, looking for that light. And the famous Gemara that says that Am Yisrael mekachim tachodashim. We have the ability to sanctify the month, to sanctify the light in the darkness. That's our job and that's what we have to do. But we'll have to end here because we're out of time. So Shkoyach Yitzi. Shkoyach Tuvia. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And we'll talk again next week.